Weston from Kids Ministry Circle. Kids Ministry Circle is a community for kids ministry leaders to be encouraged and equipped to love and serve the local church. And here we are at another church to do another space tour. And I've got my friend Becca here, who's just about to introduce herself in just a second. And so we're gonna show you this specific campus and all the fun additions that they've made and all the unique things that you could potentially add to your church. Just a reminder, you don't need the biggest and the snazziest building to reach kids with the gospel. This is just a way for you to think outside the box and think about what other churches are doing so that you can improve and maybe add some fun new aspects to your environment. So Becca, thank you so much yes. for being here today. You're welcome. As Lauren said, my name is Becca and I have the honor and the privilege of overseeing all of our campuses here at Red Rocks Church. So we have four locations in Denver, and we have one in Austin, Texas, and one in Brussels, Belgium. Um, and I have an awesome central team that I get to work with. We work on curriculum. We set the vision and the culture for this team. Um, and we're excited to have you at our Park Meadows campus today. Yay! Okay, so tell me how many staff you have here at Park Meadows. So at Park Meadows, we have our kids pastor, Dakota. Um, and then he has what we call a team lead, so somebody under him, um, and her name is Bailey. So just two of them right now. Fun, mm -hmm. that's awesome. All right, so here we are. As you can tell, we are here. Now, tell us a little bit about this design piece. So this was just a fun um, way to bring like kind of our, we have topography at all of our campuses and we always are like, how do we bring some fun, some more fun into it, or like bring the topography together. Um, so this was just a fun like, oh, you punch in the address and like you are here. So all of our campuses have this fun little you are here sign. And then it's become a little photo booth for families, which we weren't expecting, but it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And then they tag us and they post it on Facebook or so social media. And that's how other people begin to know about your Park Meadows campus. Yes. All right, so we're actually going to uh, turn around really fast because I want to talk about this garage door. But tell yes. us um, how this functions on Sunday morning. So we keep this closed um, when volunteers are walking in and then we have our little volunteer rally. Once the volunteer rally is set and volunteers are all in their rooms and everything's ready to go, which is typically like 15 minutes before service starts, families start checking in, we open the garage door and then families can start walking in. Um, and then the security, our security team usually stands at the front mm -hmm. um, and make sure that everybody has a tag. So yeah. you can't come through our space without a tag. Nice. And then um, 15 minutes after service starts, we close the garage door again so that, you know, kids is like locked down secure. Yep. No one can get in except for staff. If a parent needs to come and check out a kid early, they'll just come to the check-in desk. Um, we'll radio whatever room, like get Johnny ready. Um, we're coming to pick him up, mom's ready to pick him up. And then a staff will go get them and bring them to mom or dad. And then during our last song, our last worship song, that's when we'll open the garage door back up. Security will stand here and then they'll all, everybody who walks through has to show a tag. Yep. Um, has to have a staff badge or has to have a tag. So nice. no one gets through kids. Yes. It's very safe and yeah. secure. So yeah. That's awesome. And then all of our campuses have this because it's just an easy way to lock yep. it down. Yep. And it's an easy way to let the most amount of people in at once. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the classrooms. Okay, here we go. All right, so here we are in the baby's room. Yes. So there's a few things that I would love for you to kind of explain design-wise, some unique aspects. So first, tell me about this little I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, counter. Counter. Uh, we, call it, we call it a counter. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was one of our like dream things where it was like, okay, if you could have one thing in the space, yeah. what would it be? And we decided to like pass the babies through. And yep. I, I honestly, I think we got the idea from Life Church. Oh yeah? Yeah, because Sean and Craig Rochelle are uh -huh. our friends and so we've gotten to tour there and so Fun. we've stolen some things yes. from them and I, this was one of the things where I was like, that's genius. Yeah. Like, because we were always like, oh my gosh, walk, like, can I come in? Is there like little yep. by the Watch door? The I don't want to slam a head or yeah, slam like fingers in the mm -hmm. door. So this is an easy pass through. 
parents just walk up, that door stays closed. And then during service, if it gets too loud, they can shut the garage door um, or they leave it open because sometimes it's like, oh, can, because the screens come down there and they can see worship. Oh, no. Nice. So sometimes it's a good distractor. Yeah. So they'll either leave it open or they'll use the um, big service screen as a distraction. That's yeah. so smart, <laughs> fun little. Depending on the temperature of the room, yeah. you know how that goes. I love this piece. I love, you don't, I feel like I've never seen this before, but it's so smart because as soon as you open that door, all the babies are like, oh, someone's here to get me. Yes. And you're like, no, yes. no, 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 don't cry. You've been doing so yeah. good. And so. And that was like, kind of the thought behind the garage doors too um, is, you know, as soon as babies see the, the first parent come, then they yeah. get upset. And, and we have the option of like keeping the garage door shut so yeah. that, you know, they don't get upset when they keep seeing people walk yep. back and forth. Yeah. You know? Nice. All right, so here we are in, in front of our twos mm -hmm. classroom. So tell me a little bit about what programming looks for your little. So what curriculum do you use? How do you kind of weave that into Sunday mornings? Yeah, so in our two-year-old room, and it depends on the campus too, so we offer a like shorter version of what our threes through fives is mm -hmm. doing. So they use Ollie, the owl, and then they also have um, a little bit condensed worship and then a prayer. So it's a lot shorter because, mm -hmm. you know, their attention right. span They're is little. a lot smaller. <laughs> um, but at our Lakewood campus, sometimes more often than not, they bring the twos into the large group program. Okay. So it just depends, and it just depends on the temperament of the twos that yep. day, you know? So it's an it's a nice option to mm -hmm. either use the TV in there and use the condensed version, or know that like, hey, the twos are having a great day, let's bring them out into large yeah. group programming yeah. with the rest of the, the pre-K class, so That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so here are some uh, fun aspects for this room. So we've yeah. got this two-way glass, which, mm -hmm. Obviously, only the parents can look in, yeah. but it's a mirror on the other side. So parents can sneak a peek of their little ones, and but the kids can't see them, which is yes, a really fun is. aspect to a classroom, especially because we, if you've been in ministry a long time, you know that <laughs> the two-year-olds can be sometimes that separation anxiety is high. And so if they can peek in without the kids seeing the parents, that's really helpful. And then talk to us about this little door. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I know everyone who comes to our campuses is like, what, what's going on here? Is this like a secret storage? And I'm like, no, it's, it's just a little door that goes into the classroom. Um, and the kids love it. Like, I would say 90% of them are like, no, I'm going through my own little door. <laughs> um, and at our Lakewood campus, it's kind of fun because it looks like they're going into like a little fort because it's got like a, a rock yeah um so i'm not sure if we'll do the same thing here but um yeah they love it it's and now it's a thing like we have to have it at every campus yep. so we added it at littleton and we have it here and we'll probably add it at arvada too because nice. if what if they've been to one campus and they're yes. like like sometimes they'll stop at arvada and they'll be like where's my little door and they're like you've been to another <laughs> campus oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah because arvada doesn't have a little door yep. so it's kind of funny they're like uh, yeah, where's my that's little so cute. What a fun way to get kids excited to be a church. Like that's just one simple way that it is. Like, oh no, it it's is. fun from the very beginning. From the moment you walk in, yeah. there's something fun with you in mind, and so I think that's a really sweet. Yeah. All right, let's jump over to look at your preschool large group space. So here we are in their preschool large group room. So kind of what Becca just said of sometimes the two year olds join, but this room is primarily used by the threes, fours and fives. And what I love about this space is that it's in the very middle of their hallway and it's not a room. So you may think a large group room needs to be a room with a door and needs to look official, but because this hallway is so secure, they can add a stage to the middle of the hallway and put a TV up on the wall and call it large group. And so I think yeah. that is really special and really unique to this space. Kind of tell me how, tell me a little bit about their large group programming. What does that typically look like on a Sunday? Yeah, so they start in their rooms um, and they do what we call like pre-large group mm -hmm. activities. So usually it's a movement activity and sometimes it's um, a craft, sometimes not. It just depends 
or sometimes it has to do with the prayer. And then they'll hear the cleanup song, which is not your typical cleanup song. <laughs> but they'll hear it and they know, oh, it's time to clean up. And then we go to large group. Um, and then so the threes, fours, fives, sometimes twos will all come in this room. Yep. And we'll start with worship. And we do, we film our own intros, outros. Like we do use nice. Ollie. We love Ollie. Um, but then we film our own intros and outros so oh, that's and we try to use our ministry leaders from every campus so that they're all seeing faces like yeah you know of, of people that they recognize which is really funny because with littles they're like i know you i've yeah. seen you on tv so it's cute for them yeah um and like you said with this open space um our lakewood campus is like that too mm -hmm. there's no room it's just they come into an open space yeah. and that's where they do their yeah. large group nice All right, so here we are in, I don't know, I'm gonna call this the big kids hallway because as we get yeah. down, we get like yeah. kindergarten through fifth grade here. But I wanted to stop and talk about this new classroom that Red Rocks is adding to their hallway. So Becca, why don't you share a little bit about what you're working on right now? Um, yeah, so special needs has always been a dream of ours and we weren't sure how to execute it or anything like that. And then through friends of our leadership team, we learned about what's called Champions Club and they are the absolute experts at, at what they do. Um, they, depending on your need, your budget, your rooms, they help you outfit the room, tell you what you need. They have training. Um, it's a really awesome program for people who are probably like me scared yeah. to start it but know that you need it and want it and have a heart for it but don't know where to begin yeah they are the experts and they're amazing and they just come in and help you so we will link website information and how to find more information about champions club i think uh there's probably a lot of kids ministry leaders that are in becca's position where you don't know how to build a special needs classroom. You don't know what equipment to get and how to do that. And so Champions Club could be a really great resource for you because like you said, they work with your budget, they work with your space and yeah. they really help you um, figure out a way to best serve your special needs families. Yeah. So that's really cool. All right, so now we're gonna flip around and we're gonna talk about bathrooms <laughs> because who doesn't love to talk about bathrooms? Um, and so, Becca, why don't you share a little bit about kind of your hope in creating bathrooms the way that you guys did? Yeah, so as you notice, they're not your typical like school bathrooms that have stalls or mm -hmm. uh, multi-kid bathrooms because again, I'm a safety nerd. And so when we did our safety training with um, one of our, our HR person actually used to work for Child Protective Services mm -hmm. and she um, told us that kid on kid abuse often happens in the bathroom. And so I was like, okay, and thinking about building this space, I'm yep. like, is it possible to put separate bathrooms so there's only one kid in a bathroom yeah. at a time? So now here we are. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like an easy way for our ministry leads, for our volunteers to not have to worry about like who's in the bathroom, there's only one kid in there, like yep. how many kids did I send in there? And yep. it's just another way to like, you know, not have to worry about safety stuff or yeah. if something's happening. Yeah, so do your volunteers send one kid at a time? Yeah, so we have a runner, what we call okay. a runner, who is always just in the hallway yep. to help with bathroom runs. So they'll either, uh, they're, everyone's on a radio or okay. one of our volunteers in a room is always on a radio. Yeah. Um, and so they'll be like, hey, is there a runner? I'm gonna send somebody to the bathroom. Okay. So then they'll just stand here while yep. somebody goes in. Um, and then they'll send them back. They'll yeah. walk them back to their classroom and be like, okay, Susie's back. Yeah, um, so that they know they're back. Nice. Yeah. And so uh, these are kids only bathrooms. Yes. So even <laughs> if a volunteer really has to go to the bathroom, <laughs> they have to walk out yes. of the kids space because these are reserved for kids yep. only, which I think is just a great way to continue to strive towards safety yep. and protecting our kids. So that's great. I love this idea. I love not having a bunch of stalls and I think that's a great way to yeah. continue to be safe. Yes, thank you. All right, let's take a look at uh, one of your large group rooms for the grade school kids. Okay. So. Here 
we are in their fourth and fifth grade large group room. And so they have a kindergarten through third grade large group room right next door. Um, but I wanted to kind of talk about their fourth and fifth grade classroom, large group room combination and um, how they've created that specific with this preteen age group in mind. This is can be sometimes a struggle for kids, ministry leaders to figure out how do I make a room that's not quite youth ministry, not quite students, but still cool. That's not as elementary E. And so talk to us about kind of this room and how you utilize it on Sunday mornings. Yeah, so they can use this space. It's kind of like we call it our game room because there's like different things that they can do. And um, like for the girls and so it looks very <laughs> like masculine right now. But <laughs> we also put like, the, there's like a craft section too. So like the, if the girls are into crafts or whatever, yep. but a lot of times they want to play video games with the boys, which is cool. Um, but yeah, we really pride ourselves on bridging the gap between us and youth. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted this to feel like you said, preteen. Yeah. And so youth, they get to hang out and do kind of the same thing before youth starts. So we wanted to give them that feel yeah. of, yeah, this is kind of what youth feels like. Because if you go into any of our campuses on a Wednesday night for youth, mm -hmm. you're going to see like a can, well, a larger version of what we have in here. Yep. So um, it's kind of a bridge. Yeah. So they get to kind of feel like, oh, this is maybe what youth is going to feel like. Yep. So they don't have any pre-large group activities like okay. the other kids do. They just get to hang out. Get to play. Yeah. yeah. So, um, which is fun. You know, it's an ice. A lot of times the video games is an icebreaker, especially for the boys. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just get to hang out and then they start their large group programming, yep. which is in the space right next to us. Yep. Um, and then do they get to come back in here at the end or is this done? They do get to come back here at the end, but a lot of times um, they don't want to. They're, oh, okay. It's discussion and they have been really enjoying their discussion time. Nice. And so a lot of times they don't come back in yeah. here, which is really awesome, but that they can awesome. once, once their yeah. discussion time is over. Right, so here we are in another room that's not designed for kids. Yes. You've decided to create a space just for volunteers. And so tell us a little bit about how volunteers use this space, um, when it's open on Sunday mornings, and all of those fun details. Yeah, so um, we love on our volunteers so much here, as I'm sure every church does, but one easy way for us to love on our volunteers is to give them a space and to feed them. So as you can see, <laughs> there's lots of snacks and goodies, and then we usually like get bagels or something, depending on the campus. Yep. Um, we always have food and coffee for our volunteers, and then there's a little beverage fridge. There's cubbies in there so they can put their stuff. So a lot of them come early, and it's a way for them just to like connect before mm -hmm. service starts too. So it provides community. It yep. just provides an easy way for us to be like, hey, we don't pay you, but like we love you and we'll spoil you. Like tell us what your favorite snacks are. Yeah. Um, food is just a love language around this place. So yeah. it's just an easy, like I said, it's an easy way to love on your volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then you guys do your big volunteer pre-service huddle outside, right? Out yeah, there. we actually do it in our kindergarten through third grade nice. room because we've grown out of this yes, space. Yes, you cannot but, get all your volunteers Yes, yes. Space. Um, But it's still a nice space for them to come, grab a yeah. coffee, grab food before yep. service starts, um, or just hang out. Well, friends, that is the end of our tour here at Red Rocks Park Meadows campus, which is just, I don't know what, 30 minutes south of Denver, just in case you were like looking at the map of Colorado and you're like, where is this? Um, and so it's just a little bit south of the city. And I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you gained some new insight on things that you can add to your space, whether you are building or renovating or just trying to find a way to spruce up your environment. So Becca, thanks again for joining yeah. us. If people have questions or questions for your team or would like more explanation of the cabinets or the fun small door, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you and your team? Yeah, I would say best way to come in contact with us is email redrockskids at redrockschurch.com. That's great. Yeah. Well, friends, if you would like to learn more about Kids Ministry Circle, see more of our space tour videos, figure out how to join a cohort or learn more about coaching opportunities, you can head over to kidsministrycircle.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube channel so you can get these videos sent right to you when they launch. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.